Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. If you're a beginner just getting started with game dev, it can actually be quite overwhelming learning all of the different disciplines that are required to make just a single complete game. You basically need to learn how to use the engine, then you need to learn programming, you need to learn how to do some art, 3D modeling, animation, sound design, music, UI, UX, and so on. You need to learn how to make health systems, level systems, pathfinding, how to do some artificial intelligence, state machines, splines, water, lights, world streaming, safe systems, and tons, tons more. The list for all the things needed to make an entire complete game is nearly endless. For a beginner, the prospect of having to learn all of this at once just to make your very first game can definitely seem quite daunting. It is indeed quite a lot of stuff. Looking at all of this, everything that is required to make a game really makes you think how it's actually a miracle how any game ever gets completed. Personally, when it comes to learning, I highly recommend you focus on making multiple small games as opposed to just one really massive game. And one way to do that, to make multiple games quickly, is to actually focus on just a limited number of all of these required skills. Just focus on a limited number of them instead of trying to learn all of them for your very first project. So if you are a beginner and you want to learn how to make games, then one option is just make tons and tons of prototypes. That's a valid way to learn. However, I also highly encourage you to take those projects to completion. There are so many challenges that really only show up at the end of a project, and if all you do is really just prototypes, then you're never really going to learn about those. So my advice is to make complete games, small games of course, make them as small as possible. And in order to do all that and still learn, my advice is to really just focus on learning a handful of these things per project, and then plug your skill gaps with some assets. I believe this is a much better approach as opposed to trying to build it all yourself, all on your own, on your very first project, which for the most part usually ends up with really just abandoned projects. That's what happens to most people. So focusing on learning just one skill per project is probably going to help you actually reach the end and end up with a complete game that you can actually play. And for that, the SSR is an absolutely invaluable tool to help you make your own games. You can get pretty much anything you need, whether it be some complex systems, some models, animations, or literally anything. There's tons of free stuff and tons of paid stuff. Unity sponsored this video because their spring sale has just started, which features over 300 of the best assets at 50% off. Since these are picked from the top assets on the store, Literally every single one of these is excellent, so if you were to just randomly buy something absolutely at random, you definitely could not go wrong. And on top of the regular discount, there are some really awesome flash deals at 70% off that refresh every day. I highly recommend that you bookmark this page and check it very regularly in order to see if there's anything you want on a really nice deep discount. All the links are down in the description. I'm going to browse the store and highlight my favorite ones that I think you should get in a little bit. But before that, back to the original topic. For example, for your first game, let's say you'd like to make some kind of Souls-like adventure game. Now, making a game like this actually involves quite a lot of disciplines, quite a lot of skills. So maybe, for example, for your first project, you really just want to focus on your programming skills. Visuals are actually the easiest thing to pick up from the store. So first, you need a character. It could be straight from this pack. In fact, with just this one pack, you could make all the characters in your entire game. Then, of course, the character is going to need some animations, so it could be from this sword animation pack. After that, you need some kind of environment. So you could combine it with this gorgeous medieval castle for something really nice. And then games need some kind of enemy, so you could grab some enemies from this giant pack. Put all that together and here is a super simple game that I built myself in a few hours. I built this while only focusing on my main skill set, programming, and using some assets in order to plug my skill gap. You could build this exact same thing yourself, either as a complete project or as a learning project. By picking up these visual assets, you could focus solely on the logic part of making your game. And even in terms of logic, maybe you want to focus just on something like making a combat system or a world spawning system, meaning you can also get help for building all the other systems. So instead of building a health system from scratch, you can pick up my own health system asset, which is free and it's actually pretty robust. Then instead of building your own safe system, you can use Easy Save, which is one of the highest rated assets on the store. Maybe instead of building your own custom state machine, Maybe you could use something like Behavior Designer. And instead of spending a mountain of time researching how to do some really efficient, really cool destruction, instead of all that time, you could just buy a tool like Rayfire. If you put all of that together, you have a really great complete game while also gaining a ton of knowledge in the process. As opposed to what I said in the beginning, which is if you try doing everything yourself, chances are you're probably just going to quit the project midway through. So basically my advice for the beginners is make tons of small games and focus on just learning one specific thing per each game and then use the SSR in order to plug your skill gaps. That's really one of the best ways to use the SSR effectively in your game dev journey. Or alternatively, maybe you just suddenly came up with an interesting game design idea that you want to test out in a prototype really quickly. For that, you can use the multitude of really excellent game templates on the store. Like one of the highest rated ones is this one, Top Down Engine. Like the name implies, this helps you create games from a top-down perspective super easily. 
So starting from a template like this one can save you a ton of time. You can basically very, very quickly just validate your game idea before you end up putting months or years into it. These can really help speed up your development, at least in the prototyping stage. So perhaps you test out the idea in order to see if it does work. And then if it does, perhaps you keep building upon it or maybe rebuild everything from scratch. Both options are perfectly valid. But by using these assets, this really helps speed up the prototyping stage so you can test and validate your idea again before you put any significant amount of time into it. And even for non-beginners like myself, the SSR is still an invaluable tool. The main use case that I mentioned a while ago, using it to plug your skill gaps, it is absolutely still applicable to non-beginners. Like in my case, I'm a programmer, that's my skill set. I am not an artist, I am not a 3D modeler or animator. So for my last game, Dinky Gardens, the only way that I was able to build that game was by using assets. I didn't use that many code assets since that's my main skill set, so I built pretty much all the code myself. But I absolutely used the asset store for pretty much the entire visual side of the game. The buildings were from an asset pack, then the customizable characters from another one, the dinkies also came from a pack, and so on. I bought all the animations, I bought some shaders, some particles. Also used some really super awesome tools to help me polish the game, namely Feel and Text Animator. If I had not used the SSR at all, if I had not used any assets, then the game would simply look much worse if I had to make all the visuals myself. And also, it would have taken 10 times longer since I'm really not as efficient at 3D modeling as a proper 3D modeler. So by using assets to plug my skill gaps, I was able to work much faster and make a much better game. One asset that I've used in pretty much all my Steam games is the A-Star Pathfinding Project. This is an insanely fast pathfinding asset. I started using it 10 years ago for my game Survivor Squad. I used it back then because I needed pathfinding for hundreds of units, and back then I did not have the skills to be able to write some efficient multi-threaded code. However, nowadays, nowadays I actually do have that skill. I could write some pre-performant multi-threaded pathfinding system if I wanted to, but doing so would cost me quite a ton of time. And given how I'd rather spend that time doing many other things, I really value time more than money, I got no problem paying a few bucks to buy an asset that someone already spent a thousand hours building. So with assets, other than just plugging your skill gaps, even if you do have that skill, you can still pick up assets to save you a ton of time. You can spend just a little bit of money to save thousands of hours. And in this specific case, I really don't think I even bought this asset on a sale, so I think I probably paid 150 bucks for it 10 years ago, and it has certainly been worth it. I mean, like I said, I've used it in pretty much every single one of my games, and throughout all of those, I have grossed over a million dollars. So spending 150 bucks 10 years ago to allow me to do all this, that was definitely a very worthwhile purchase. Just remember that assets are really just tools to help you make your games. If you're making games just for fun, if you enjoy doing 3D modeling or programming and your goal is simply fun, if so, then by all means, continue building everything yourself. But if your main goal is having a complete game at the end, then using assets can really help save you a ton of time on that journey and make your game better in the end. Also, let me make just one quick note. If you're the kind of person who doesn't want to use assets for fear that players won't turn on you, if so, then let me point you to a video that I made quite a while ago on that exact topic. Basically, the TLDR of that video is players do not care. All that players want are really just fun games to play. If your game is fun, then that's all that matters. It does not matter if you bought the assets or you built everything from scratch. You don't get bonus points for doing it all yourself. In the end, really the players just care about the end result. They just care that the game is fun to play. So definitely go ahead and use every tool at your disposal to make the best game you can make. So with that said, let's browse the spring sale and I'll tell you which ones I highly recommend that can save you a ton of time right here from the main page. Now in terms of visuals, it's obviously dependent on what style you're going for. But if you like low poly, personally I'm a huge fan of the Cynthia low poly style. Or for effects, Gabriel has a ton of really awesome particle effects. The asset inventory is definitely one excellent tool. This one basically lets you easily search upon the thousands of assets that you may have to find very specific things. It's especially useful if you, like me, also bought a bunch of asset packs on Humble Bundle. You can import those into this tool and make them easily searchable. If you want character customization in your game, then I highly recommend this pack. This is exactly the same pack that I used in my game Dinky Guardians. And it's also the pack that I included when I made the character customization system. You can download the project files for that one, which was made exactly using this pack. Then you can also go watch all of my asset review videos. Pretty much every single one of these assets is excellent, so I can definitely highly recommend all of these. Then in terms of flash deals, I bought this pack ages ago and it has been extremely useful. It's got all kinds of animations for all kinds of things. I recommend you pick up a giant bundle with tons of assets whenever you need to do some kind of prototype. So a pack like this one would be excellent. If you want to make open world games, then check out Gaia. It's what I used last year when I made my open world game. I've already mentioned Feel. This is an excellent one for adding all kinds of polish to your game. And Text Animator, which is another must. You can very easily make your text come alive. So whether you're a beginner or an advanced user, I highly recommend you use the SSR to plug your skill gaps. Do this instead of trying to build everything yourself. The Spring Sale is live right now, and this one contains some of the best assets on the store. 
So definitely take advantage of this time if you need anything. Check the link in the description, and like I said, definitely keep a close eye on the flash deals for those super deep discounts. Alright, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.